Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What up, what up, what up, podcast, party, people, but it was a loud puh. What's happening? How are you? How you living? How you feeling? Are you good? Doing pretty good myself. Just wrapped up a podcast with Spencer Char- Spencer Charnis from Ice Nine Kills. Very cool podcast. Good chat with the homie. I'm, I'm loving that new Ice Nine Kills record. Welcome to Horrorwood. Welcome to Horrorwood, where anyone would kill for a callback. Some good shit. Some good shit, man. So yeah, now I'm doing the intro for Jamie Morgan from Code Orange, which I think you're going to like. This is a good interview. Fun. He's a funny motherfucker. It's a good vibe. No. It was a good vibe talking to him. I uh, Let's see, what have I been doing? I just finished mastering my record. Uh, excuse me, my new record. Which I uh, just about getting done, putting the finishing touches on it. Got a couple little interludes that we're putting in there, and you know, just had to get all that, get all that finalized. Talking artwork with uh, this guy Seth Zero Anton. He's the singer for Septic Flesh. He's going to do the cover, so that's all underway. So many things. So many things happening, and it's like, finally my life is like getting back to normal. My uh, the last two weeks has been insane. I had it's been like finals, cramming for finals, man. It's like finishing the album, finishing the mixes, and mastering like all at the same time. Fucking this, Jesus, it's been stressful, and now it's finally chill. My and then right at the end of it all, my wife had like a little procedure, my sugar pie. Had a little procedure. She had a little bit of a, she had kind of like a minor surgery. And, uh, you know, what's on her lady parts and her stuff, her bladder and stuff. So she's doing good. It all went well. But, uh, yeah, the boy here ain't going to be no loving. There's been no relations, no relations for Rob Flynn for... Some to six weeks, for God's sakes. It's going to be a whole lot of jerking off here at the studio. A whole lot of you porn. It's like that Chris Rock special. You ain't getting no pussy for a long time. That's right. That's going to be me. I ain't getting no pussy for a long time. <laughs> That's going to be me. Just going to be hanging out here with myself. With myself. And you know, it's funny because I haven't been jerking off that much. I just haven't been jerking off a whole lot lately. I don't know, me and my, me and Sugar Pie got into a good groove, you know. I was like, okay, we're on a good, I can do, I can keep up with this pace. You know, and then I was like, I'll save it up for, <laughs> save it up, save it up? Is it saving it up? I don't know. It's better. I think it's better, you know. So, in fact, I went through a big jerking off phase about a year ago. And then now I'm just kind of like, I'm coasting. I haven't, I haven't been doing it all. So now I'm going to get back all into it. That's, that's that. I'm like, just having a go. I'm like, well, I got free reign to do it anytime I want to now. So fuck it. I'll just fucking jerk off every couple of days. Why not? When I got my computer, I got my little paper towel. Look at this. I got a whole thing. I got a whole ream of paper towels right here. And I just fucking put, I make a little, I make a little, like a little gasket under me, right under my butt, up into under the, under the computer and just go to town. 
cleans up all the mess right there. It's good. And don't act like you don't do shit like that either. Some of you were probably jacking off into a tissue over the toilet or something. I know some friend. I got some friends who just jack off into a sock, and which I do on the road. It's called a bunk sock. The bunk sock. You know you got a bunk sock when you got when you're married, and it's like I'm just gonna jack off in this fucking sock here, and then you just throw it down at the bottom of your bunk. <laughs> some people use the same sock over and over again, which I find disgusting personally. I don't want. I don't need to crunch it all open, and you know, like I just get a fresh sock. Sometimes I don't even get a sock. If I've been wearing the sock too long, I don't use that sock. I'll just go get a fresh sock. But uh, I know some people do it into the tissue. Some people just do it onto themselves, which I'm just like, that's just more of a mess than I want to deal with. You know, it's one thing when you're having sex, but like when you're just doing it by yourself, I don't need that. Me- I don't need that mess on me. Got the paper towel. It's like a little. It's like a little. You know, it's like a little. Uh, a little tent <laughs> from my butt to the computer, from the laptop. <laughs> That's the best way. And then, you know, you do it in the shower, too, every once in a while. Lock the door and go to town in the shower. Take your little, I got a little squeegee. We got glass windows for a squeegee. Sorry, I take the little squeegee and just kind of rub it all down. <laughs> get get down the drain there, you sucker. You little fucker. Uh, yeah. So we've been doing that. We, uh, what do we do? We watch that movie. If you haven't seen that movie, P- er, uh, it's not a movie. It's a spinoff of The Suicide Squad, which I guess is another movie. There was So there's Suicide Squad, which came out, which is the one with Jared Leto as the Joker. It's got Harley Quinn. I liked that. thought it was good. My kids were crazy about it, so we watched it a bunch of times. And then... Uh, and then I guess they came out with another one called The Suicide Squad, which is still got Harley Quinn, but a bunch of other new characters, which was good. Uh, John Cena's in it. John Cena, the wrestler, he plays Peacemaker. They had uh, Bloodsport, who was played by Idris Elba. And my wife and I were talking about how on the Howard Stern show, uh, Benji was pointing out how Idris Elba, if you don't know who Idris Elba is, he's like a good looking really good looking black guy anyway apparently idris elba came on to the howard stern show and then he posed in a picture with a bunch of people in after the interview and he was wearing white pants and benji from howard stern was just like oh my god like look how fucking huge that guy's cock is it, you can see it through the pants. he's wearing white pants so you could really see his, <laughs> his apparently his cock was very visible he's like look at that fucking thing he's got a huge cock so then everybody so then howard and robin were all talking about how <laughs> it was all that so we're watching this the suicide squad movie and i'm telling my wife i'm like apparently idris elba has a huge cock She's like, really? How do you know? I was like, Benji from Howard Stern was talking about it. And they all talked about how they could see his huge cock through his pants in the photo. And it was funny. She's like, so apparently lots of... The ladies are crazy about Idris Elba, apparently. And apparently the fact that he has a huge cock is, you know, getting getting well known. Anyway, so we watched that. It was good. That was good. Not great, but good. Kind of a confusing storyline. Like, very confusing opening. But uh, it ended up being good. And then I guess there's a spinoff from this particular The Suicide Squad of a series called Peacemaker with John Cena. And that is actually excellent. It's fucking... John Cena is really funny. Like, he's re- it's really raunchy and gnarly and tits and naked chicks. And, you know, it's all, all the music's like 80s... Gl- like... Not even like A League, it's like D League, '80s glam rock, <laughs> like fucking like choir boys, and you know a bunch of stuff that was way off of the radar for most people. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to hear that all that stuff. And it's basically that's the whole soundtrack. And uh, I re- we really enjoyed it. It's really well done. So I highly recommend that. I can't remember if it's on. It's on something. You'll find it. Just put in Peacemaker John Cena. You know, I got that remote control where I can just do it right into the remote. I can just go, John Cena, Peacemaker, boop, and it just pops it up. How easy is that? How easy is that? I wish music was that easy. 
I can do that on my iPhone, but some, half the time the iPhone gets it wrong. I go play, you know, bring me the horizon post horror survival or fucking whatever it's called. And I'll be like, we don't, we can't find that. I'm like, what? Come on now. Come on now. Anyway, highly recommend it. We watched that. Then we then watched The Suicide Squad. And then we watched, what else did we watch? We watched the latest Attack on Titan. You following that shit? Whole family's crazy about that Attack on Titan fucking Japanese anime shit. So good. We're nuts about it. And it's and it's so cool. You know, I was I talked I think I talked about this on the last one, but I was such an anime nerd when I was a kid. Like growing up. Like I would go to the conventions. Like I was going to the anime convention. I would go to the Robotech. They called it Robotech. That was a anime series out here that was actually based on a series from Japan called Macross, but they called it Robotech out here for some reason. Man, I went to the Robotech conventions. I was, I mean, I was just fucking, you know, I used to watch Space Cruiser Yamato and fuck, just Akira, and I was just fucking bananas about that shit. And uh, to see my kids get into it just totally without any input from me, like zero, like I, you know, I kind of, j- I just stopped watching it as much. And certainly during their youth, they haven't seen us watch it although we've watched a lot of animated flicks but uh, to see them get into it it's just it's fucking rad and they're super into it they're like buying all the mangas and they're reading all the, not buying the mangas they're reading the mangas online and you know it's just it's just cool it's like a weird full circle thing with me and my kids watching this shit and my Gen- Geneva's into it sugar pies into it so we all we, Sunday we got together we're like all right let's get a fucking short ass 20 minute fucking 20 minute episode 20 minutes not long enough and they drop them every week every week they only give you 20 minutes more i'm like 20 minutes you bastards and i'm hooked i can't let i'm fucking hooked i ain't gonna miss that 20 minutes especially now it's getting so good fucking brutal it's brutal too it's fucking savagery so, uh, yeah, shout out to all of the Attack on Titan fans out there. I'm fucking loving it. Loving it. Uh, what else? What else has been happening? Yeah, that's about it. I had a good meeting with the label. Just talking all the setup for the record. We're trying to narrow down the window, and we're going to release the record and you know, find our own lane. Get all that shit going. So, yeah, coming together. Coming together. We got the Catharsis four-year anniversary full album playthrough happening on Friday for the Electric Happy Hour. That should be pretty cool. We're probably going to change the order of the set because it's not going to go in the album order because, dude, there's a lot of different tunings on that record. It's such a fucking tuning mess. Jesus. I got one song that has two different tunings in it. I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Like, this is so, you know, like, it's just crazy. Even with guitar changes, this is going to be so, you know, uh, it's going to be hard. (laughs) Like, it's going to be. So we're going to change the order to make the guitar change, you know, like, I want to keep the flow going. I like to play, like, three songs in a row or four songs in a row and then break. And it's just not going to be possible in the order of the record because it'll just really, really drag down. So we're going to mix that up a little bit, which I'm stoked about. I think it'll be cool. In fact, it might even be better. You know, it might, like, bring some of the heavier... I don't know what the order is going to be yet, but I think it'll for sure bring some of the heavier songs up earlier into the album playthrough. So, yeah. Yeah. It's happened. Four years. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Um, And, yeah, that's about it, man. That's about all that's been happening. That about, that's it. Yeah, that's about it. Just been it's been kind of a slow been kind of a slow slow week here. But I'm back in my podcast game. I'm glad that you guys saw the Andy Beersack uh episode went up. Seems like people really liked that one, so that was cool. And uh yeah, I'll be back. I'll be dropping them. I'll be dropping them regularly. In fact, I'm going to play 
my first guest right now, my first guest, my a song from my guest here. First song from my guest here. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, this is My World off of their album I Am King, Code Orange. Check this shit out. Motherfuckers are heavy. It's heavy. Cool riff. This song is called Bleeding the Blur, or Bleeding in the Blur. Sorry, I don't got my glasses on. Everything's a blur. <laughs> I don't got, everything is bleeding in the blur without my fucking, without my reading glasses. Yeah, this is a trippy song. I like it. Check out the vocals. I don't know why, but this song kind of reminds me of Nirvana for some reason. In a good way. Like, I think it's fucking cool. This song's called Forever. 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 Don't burn my gods down. Scalp. 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 Swallowing the Rabbit Hole off of their Underneath record. This right here is their new song that's actually starting to burn up the radio charts here in America called Out for Blood. Make sure 
There you go. It's a banger right there, man. I like it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is the mighty, mighty Jamie Morgan from Code Orange coming at you on No Fucking Regrets. Hey, everyone. I want to take a break from the interview for a second to give you a word from our sponsor, martyrstore.net. Check this out. Campbell Corpse frontman George Corpse Grinder Fisher, who has been a guest on NFR. Go back and check that episode out. It was a great one. Anyway, he's dropping his debut album February 25th. You can pre-order now at martyrstore.net. The Corpse Grinder self-titled album features 10 brutal tracks plus a guest appearance from Eric Rutan. There are signed CDs, wall flags, hoodies, and even cassettes available now. Vinyl will be available in the summer. Use code ROB, that's my name, R-O-double-B, the R-O-double-B, at checkout and save 10% off your order. Martyrstore.net, and remember to always respect the neck. All right, back to the show. Jamie Morgan. What up? How you doing, man? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Oh yeah. Is the, I was uh, I, I was I was looking at your Instagram page and it, you had a line from uh, the Nine Inch Nails song, uh, "Bow down before" you know, something like that. So now I've had of like that, now I've had that goddamn song in my head. Classic. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. Love that. That's my one of my all all time probably my all time favorite band. Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, they're sick, right? Dude. It's, I was just watching, actually, before I got on. They did this DVD in, like, a year 2000 called And All That Could Have Been. And it's, like, a bunch of live shows that are, like, cut together, shot for shot. But you can't even tell they're, like, different shows. It's, oh, like, wow. the coolest, most insane. And it's, like, in the in, – it's, like, in my opinion, in, like, their prime where it's, like, they have Downward Spiral, The Fragile, Pretty Hate right. Machine, and Broken. So it's just all songs from those four. And it's, like, wow, this is unreal. It's so good. That's – Awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I caught them. Uh, I think I was it. What was it, 90? What year did um, Downward Spiral come out? 92? I think four. 94? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, saw, I saw them uh, in 95. I saw them. Us and we were on tour with Slayer and Biohazard, and they were playing just like oh. in the, they were in the building right next to us. So we were like, let's go to the fucking Nine Inch Nails show. And like, we'll blow, we'll blow off the Slayer show because we were on tour. So it's like, you could <laughs> get away with Dude, it. Dude, my, my, drink, like, that's like, that's all my favorite shit in one thing. And then also, I know like Pantera was, was, was out at that same time. Like, I remember Chris Verena, who was in uh, Nails at that time, he helped us out with our last record. He just worked with, our guy shaded us keyboards and guitars like on programming and stuff. And he was telling us they would go to like one day, they would go to the Pantera show like every other day. So it's like, for me, nail machine head biohazard player, Pantera, are you kidding me? Like that's all my, that's my shit all in one, one amazing thing. Yeah. We ended up sneaking into the show too. It was pretty fun. Like we, we somehow like we were going in through like a back, uh, like a back gate and we just kind of flashed everybody our Slayer passes. <laughs> oh yeah. They, and they just didn't even look. They're like, Oh, okay. And they just let us in. We were like, yes. You know, you get in, That's you feel classic. like you just conquered the world. And then we got in and then I guess, I think it was Evan from biohazard. I guess he knew, uh, some of the nine inch nails guys. So after the show, we ended up going backstage and just hanging out and like, they all came out and they were all clean. Like they had all their, um, they didn't have any of the baby powder on them anymore. Yeah. They, were all, they were all showered up and all clean. And we we're like, Whoa, like this is, this is so crazy. And, and I, ended yeah, up kicking, I, ended, awesome. I ended up kicking with Trent for a minute and just kind of talking with him. And like, you know, I was, I think it was one of my, it was early on in my touring where as a singer, like my, all of, a lot of my early years, I was just the guitar player. And then Machine Head was the first time I ever toured as a singer and a guitar player. And so I was like asking Trent, like, hey, do you like, do you ever, like my throat was always fucking sore and killing me. And I was like, you do anything to warm up or anything? He's like, oh, yeah, I, I sing the uh, I sing the entire Skid Row record to front to back. And I'm just like, oh. very, very like deadpan, very deadpan, very super, no, very dry humor. And I was like, you know, it was funny. That's awesome. That dude. That's so, I don't know. I just love, I think that that period for music is an awesome period. I don't think there's a lot also like 
there's not a lot out there to read about or to watch that kind of highlights that that period where there was a lot of cool, dark, heavy, not just metal, but like different kinds of music that was really popular. Like yes. that's my favorite time period of music. Like, you know, that's like what's inspirational, to, very inspirational to us, obviously along with hardcore and all, all these other things. But uh, I just wish there was like more information about about that all that time period you know there's not really yeah it's always the same old shit like before like it's always the 70s and it's like it never ends with the fucking 70s i know right everything all over dude it's been so long it's like by the 90s there was all kinds of shit about the 70s already so why are we getting the 70s again now constantly it's like those those 70s stories just get over told at this point dude over and exactly. over again. Exactly. I want more about like what you're talking about. Like that's what I want to watch. Like I want to documentaries about that whole time period. Yeah. And it's crazy to think too, that even, even the nineties, even though it wasn't, I mean, it doesn't seem like that long ago, even though it was, you know, this was pre cell phone. This is pre pre internet really, which is kind of a weird, you know, weird to even think yeah. about like a time without yeah. the internet pre social media. So it, there wasn't that act, that ability to document, you know, Oh, like here's us backstage, you know, with your phone or whatever. I know. Like I know, but yet be... somehow they, somehow they got this Beatles movie where they're, you can right. see their entire, <laughs> like they, they, they figured it out. So I know the footage is out there. There's all those awesome home videos from back then, like the Pantera ones. Right. And even like the Slipknot ones. And, uh, those are the greatest. I have like all of those on week. I collect those tapes. So, so that's, that's the fun stuff. Or the typo one, the typo one is amazing. Yeah. Uh, after dark, I think. Yes. Yeah. That is a good, that's really funny, man. Like it's Dude, it so, so funny. fucking funny. <laughs> like they're... Yeah. Depressingly funny, every you know, like very dry, very you know, sarcastic. The perfect, like yeah, they had such a cool balance. I actually got to like do a little interview with two of them, and I was just—it's just so interesting. Like, oh yeah, who'd you the, who'd you talk to, Johnny? Kenny and Johnny, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, me and my bandmate Dom got to uh, do like a little thing when they reaped their vinyl out. That Roadrunner helped us hook up. Hook up. That's killer. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. It was so cool. They didn't give a fuck, but they were super cool. At first, they walked in and they were like, "Why are we talking to these two like, <laughs> children about?" But by the end, we were we were we were having it up. They're great dudes, honestly. Like, super nice. So guy. cool. Super they're so nice. nice. And like they had this amazing like balance between like their art is not self serious, but it's ultra serious. Like mm-hmm. the art is so important. Everything like from every single t-shirt to every single Pantone. But then on the other hand, they're like the craziest, wackiest, most insane, like goofiest band ever. Uh, at least from my perspective. I mean, you know, you obviously knew those guys, right? Very well. Yeah. Yeah. We toured with them a few times. They're, That's yeah, so I mean, they're, yeah, it, exactly what you said though. Like it, to them, the music was very, like it was deadly serious. You know, even if it had a sense of humor in it, they executed it with deadly seriousness. Yeah. And, you know, but off stage they were just fucking, let's get drunk and listen to Kiss. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> uh, Johnny, Johnny, especially Johnny. Johnny was like the best backstage. Like he was fucking such a fun dude to hang out with. You know, he's big and he's loud and he's super, you know, welcoming to everybody. And, you know, it's a great vibe. That's so awesome, man. And those, re- I mean, they have so many great records also. I love, I love their music. I love their whole catalog. I heard you actually, I just listened to, uh, so one of the last podcasts you put out, I think, with the dude from Black Veil Brides, but at the beginning you were talking about Life of Agony as well, and like doing, and like that's another one from that same kind of time period. I mean, that's they're one, they're one of a kind. Like the, the, that record is so incredible. It's like yeah. it sounds like nothing, nothing since either. People have tried, but it's not the same. Like the rawness combined with like the songwriting execution, like it's just beautiful i love them as well you know that's it's cool too because they had life of agony had they're also from brooklyn so sal was in typo negative on bloody kisses record then he's on the life of agony the keyboard player for typo produces life of agony yeah so it's all kind of like in the family and you know it doesn't sound like typo negative but it's you can hear that you can hear that element, you know what I mean? Like same, the- same corner of the world, but it's like the same tree. But yeah, it's completely different. I mean, they're both. Life of Agony almost has more of like a 
hardcore feel. Like yes. the grooves are very are very hardcore. Very biohazard at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I love yeah. that. It's awesome. Totally. Yeah. Fucking. I I posted about that record the other day, and I was just like, I listened. I was working out. And I was put that record on. First time I played that record in a hundred years, and yeah, I was like, fuck, man, top to bottom, it's a fucking great record, man. Yeah. Like, great hooks. Awesome. Great lyrics. Like, it's pretty. You know, it's hard to listen to it sometimes. You know, like you get to like when you get to Friday, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Like the yeah. last day, you're like, fuck, yeah. God, this is really fucking ugh. grim, but, but it's awesome. I mean, yeah. it's like, it feels so real, you know? I feel like personally, like for me, that's just like not, there's a lot of awesome music out there now, especially, and there's a lot of like really well done, like metal stuff, but just like this kind of, this realness is just like lacking for me that I just don't really feel comfortable. I think maybe it's like partially modern technology and just like the way that records are done and, and, and the way songs are written, but it just doesn't have, it doesn't always, I mean, there are some that do, but there's not a lot out there for me personally that like can light me up like that. So it'll make you really feel it. You might feel like, Oh, that's a cool riff or that's right. a cool drum thing. But I personally don't really give a fuck about riffs and drum things. You know, so I'm more about the emotion of the music and like the that feeling you're describing, like you feel like you're in it. Like it's more like it's art, you know, and yeah. that's in metal. That's hard to accomplish, especially now, it seems like. I mean, I would imagine that like, you know, you growing up on the East Coast, I mean, that would have been kind of like your 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 gateway drug into music, right? Like bands like Life Agony or Typo. Like, are these some of the bands like the first bands that you start seeing like as a kid or? Well, for us, like the way we got, I got into it, you know, we, my whole band, we all met when we were like 14 years old. So we've, I've known everyone in my band since we were like 13 or 14. So we pretty much got into all this stuff together, but our path started more like on the punk side of things. Just like, you know, my parents are like pretty, really young. So my dad would literally show me like minor threat and like black flag. And oh, sure. he was, he was, yeah, for sure. He was into like, and he still is, but he was, he's more into like hip hop, like Public Enemy and Rock Him and, but then, and KRS once. But then he was also into like, not surface level, but like, you know, the A list, punk, hardcore, Black Flag, Minor Threat, Bad Brains, Deep Ramon, Sex Pistols. So I was like 10 years old and listening to that. And then hearing, also hearing like Green Day, of course, because they were also at their like super peak of popularity and that was kind of tying in. And then, but our really, we got into everything through hardcore. You know, we kind of went from punk into hardcore and through hardcore, we found metal. More. Okay. It was okay. almost like, gotcha. that was kind of like our chain of events. Cause we were going to hardcore shows. When we were 14, 15 years old. Like the first code on show, I put it on when I was literally 14 years old, oh, like gosh. at like a, at an art space. And it was the same, it was pretty much the same people that are in the band now. And if they weren't in the band, they were there. So right. we were all... We were all awesome. there, so I think we, you know, we kind of came up through hardcore. That's kind of the culture that we come from, and that's like the first connections we ever made in our in our city, outside of our city. Touring it was all just through kind of being. Does your, through, does being your all dad kids. does your dad go to these shows? Like your first show? Well, yeah, my dad went to our first shows for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And my he's dad, probably he's probably it. stoked as fuck. He's like, my son's in a punk band. <laughs> he's, he was into it. He was into it, and then there was like, you know, that kind of awkward phase where he was like, I don't really know like about what you're getting into now. Then we're getting into all kinds of weird, goofy, different kinds of stuff, and then you kind of get past that, and you become like an adult. And then he was like back into it. But he's like, my dad's like so into the band. He loves the band. It's like very. It's been such a like amazingly both my parents, but just amazingly motivating factor. I feel so lucky. Like my parents had me so young. My parents had me when they were like 18. Oh, so, and I have an older sister. And so I think it's awesome because a lot of times you get those dice rolled and you don't end up with such a cool fucking dad. I got like the greatest dice roll ever. And my dad's just like a great dude who's really into our music and especially now, like really understands our music. I can literally ask my dad for like opinions about us. <laughs> right. And I trust and I trust what he says. Yeah. If he's like, this isn't really hitting me. I trust him honestly more than like the next Joe Schmo because I know he at least has like all my best interests in mind and he does right. like our music. So what's he know worse than anybody else? You know, uh, right? He like, like he, he's got a better opinion than the critics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
Carpenter's for sure. And like, like he never got into like, like speaking of like ninety sales and playing, he was never really into all of that. But he was into, you know, he's into like, and he wasn't a huge metal guy. But he's a punk guy, he's a rap guy. So sometimes we'll be making a song, like a song we just made recently, and he'll be like, "This is cool, but it needs like that groove. Like it, it's too." metally it needs more like that groove and i'm like you're dead right that's what i don't like about a lot of metal now is it's too like it's i don't know what the term is right. for it but so i'm gonna stiff. do that motion a little stiff stiff yeah. and that's where hardcore comes into play and totally in yeah hardcore in def- hardcore definitely owes way more to hip-hop with like the hip-hop groove yeah. and the yeah you know like the funk and i love your and like your grooves are very inspirational in that way and i love that about your band and well, you talk you, about man. biohazard, of course, man. And biohazard, like, I mean, that's just, I love that. I love that feeling. It, I think it's such a cool thing to hear. You know, I just had, um, I'm brain for it. Uh, I just had knock loose on here and, cool. uh, and they were talking about how, you know, his dad was super young also and that he grew up like listening to hip hop and i was like what era and he's just like yeah you know like biggie and tupac and you yeah know, like eminem and like yeah. and i was like that's crazy that like your dad is like you know he's yeah. like yeah i'd come home and like my parents would be drinking and playing cards and like blasting notorious b.i.g <laughs> i was that's like that's cool. that's fucking that's i was cool. like that's so awesome yeah. i mean i can imagine something you know similar happening at your house and you know what that what that effect is on you you know, as a kid and then turning into a musician, like, you know, like my parents, like they never listened to anything extreme. Like I, you know, they listened to a lot of black music. So that was like what I was raised on, like the Commodores, uh, Chaka Khan, you know, earth, wind and fire. So like that was that. And like, I would, I was allowed to listen to the early Beatles. So like the happy, I want to hold your hand Beatles, but they, yeah. wouldn't, they wouldn't let me listen to Sergeant Pepper. They wouldn't let me listen to hippie Beatles. <laughs> Damn, dude. That's <laughs> <Totally>. extreme. <laughs> it was, it was weird. So, you One know, one like, could argue that creates, that creates even better music because then you're like in a corner and you want to, you want to bring it, you know? So who knows yeah. what's good to have, have the, the parents who like it or the parents who don't, who really knows. Right. I mean, it made me want to go to the dark side. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. wanted to hear every, <laughs> yeah. I, then I, all I wanted to hear was the hippie Beatles. All I wanted to hear was, you know, like whatever dark shit there was out there. So, but I, I'm always like, still I still can't really get, you get with like the screaming all the way though. Right. Like they right. don't get with that all the way. They're like, eh. you know, that's, they're more into like the yelling, but not screaming. You know, if that makes sense. Yeah. I get it. But you know, they, they get where it's coming from though. You know what I mean? Like yep. growing up in punk, like, they get where it's coming from what you know that it's like this primal release of anger or energy or whatever it is you know whatever the case may be definitely definitely i um you know i was just thinking i saw you guys way back in the day dave rath turned me on to you guys uh oh yeah that's my boy is dad dave rath still with you guys oh he's not because he got let go but i absolutely oh really from road Oh yeah i don't want to I don't want to be doing breaking news on this thing, but if you say I, I, I got to speak the truth, and that's the truth. It's about it's some absolute horseshit, in my opinion. Wow, absolute horseshit I'm, crap. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I, and people I, might not know who that really is, but he, he, uh, he's definitely the soul of it, 100. percent So, I mean, yeah, we'll see what's up with it now. I mean, respect everybody there, but I mean, he was the guy. He brought us in. So, yeah, I mean, Dave Rath, just so you know, anybody who's not familiar. So there was a, there was an old regime at Roadrunner and then that got swallowed up by the major label that bought them. I can't remember who it was now, but yes. they cleaned house with like <laughs> 95% of the staff, but Dave Rath stayed on and Dave Rath was from, right. like, I mean, he was there at Roadrunner for 20 years, dude. That's a long fucking time. I mean, yeah, I remember when you, him and, from a long time. And think about it. I mean, I don't know, obviously you do this, you're familiar with some of the newer stuff, but like, He's, he signed us in Turnstile at the same time. Right. I mean, you know, that yeah. was like, and I think that. Bands that are doing great. <laughs> like, he had a good, he had a good vision on it and he understood the culture of it. And there was another kid with him there that helped out a lot as well, who now does this kid, Cody, who actually does a lot of big hip hop stuff and even uh, does like a hundred gecks and a lot of that other, a oh, lot okay. of other kind of crazy stuff. But he was in there too and did that as well. But yeah, no, Dave is the heart and soul of it. And like Dave, the main thing Dave has, is respect from people such as yourself or whether it's clown from Slipknot or whether it's 
whoever because he's been in it and he, he understands like the artist's perspective and he just likes like good music you know yeah. so like and you're like we you we would have never went there like the way we are it was hard to get us in there to begin with because we we're just so young and like dumb and didn't really we didn't really care about being there because we we're just like doing our own thing you know and it's 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 the way it is now with the internet and everything but he he got us in there man i mean he, he knows how to do it he's he's awesome i love yeah. him yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I uh, yeah. yeah, you're talking about when you're saying being in there, you're meaning you're talking about Roadrunner Records for yes. everybody who's exactly. Familiar. He got us in the house, you know, and that's what he does. And he takes care of people when they're there, and he makes sure that their music. He listens to the music in the demos, and, and he'll tell break, you out. Well, help break exactly. Gojira. I mean, like a lot. That's crazy. Oh, Gojira as well. I mean, that's crazy. Gojira Trivium. Right. Us Turnstile. Well, Trivium I mean, was there for a while. Trivium was there for a while, so you know, it's still. Oh, okay, you know, okay, okay. Yeah. But, I know Gojira, he absolutely is like, and he put us with Gojira. He put us with Gojira. I would have never known Gojira. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, he turned me on uh, to you guys. This is a few years ago. And I went went to a show, and I can't remember who was headlining, but you guys were opening, and I saw you guys play the show at the Fillmore in San Francisco. And I met met one of you guys. I I don't know if it was you or it might have been your guitar player. What's that? Okay. It wasn't yeah. me. It yeah. might have been your guitar player. I say it was like a dude he had like shaved head or something like that. Yep, one of the crazy ones. I wish you didn't meet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> was he not here no more? Okay. No, he's here. He's oh, still he? here. <laughs> he's just not there right. out of their fucking minds. Right, but right. Outside of that. No, no, but there he was super nice. He was just like, dude, huge fan. It was like, you know, it was cool. You guys, dude, he he's is- a huge fucking fan. I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, he wears your fucking shirt on stage like half our shows. I don't know if you've seen any of the of our pictures of us but go on our instagram and you'll see him wearing uh he's got the burning red shirt he's got oh, the burning right. eye shirt that's awesome he's, he's he's been repping on stage since day one so that fucking rules yeah he was yeah. he was super cool we 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 chopped it up for a while and then you know i've kind of followed your career since then and dude it's it's awesome to see you guys having this crazy success i mean just like you are the band <laughs> like at the moment it's awesome tra- it's, thank you, know, you for saying that man I mean, you're I fucking, appreciate that. Not yet, fucking two, twice nominated for a Grammy. You're fucking open. You know, you're doing the Not Fest. You're opening for Corn here right now. I mean, like, it's just yeah. crazy. I mean, you guys must just be so fucking stoked and like, just trying to hold on to the fucking roller coaster. For, you know, like. We're trying, man. I mean, like, for us, the thing is, like, I think, like, it's hard. Even hearing that, it's like. I never even see it like that because we've been doing it for so long. Like we've literally done, like you talked about that time when you saw us, we had already done 40, you not 40, but 20 U S tours. Right. Oh, shit. You know oh, wow. Like, dude, we've been grinding like on each, we've been in the dirt, each little layer, you know, right. and then we get to the next one and somebody sees us somebody like yourself we look up we look up to or whoever that never even knew we existed and that's kind of like we were constantly trying to you know we're crawling upwards in this awesome way and that upward trajectory totally keeps us like motivated and jacked up and excited um but it's always inch by inch like there's been no over one there's never been one tour we draw 100 people and the next tour we draw a thousand people it's been 100 125 200 (laughs) 300 Right. 200, <laughs> 600, you know what I'm saying? And right. literally, dude, that's been our journey. It's been like we've toured America a million times. We've toured Europe. We've toured everywhere. But I think that I pride ourselves in, I think we have, we, we, we figure out ways to keep it fresh and make it feel exciting and current and not like we're just retreading and we roll the dice. We put our balls on the table. We're not scared to get shit on and made fun of and stuff, which we do, you know? We, we try to do it. We try to handle it in, in like a old school way in the sense of like, we have toured our absolute ass off yeah. to, I mean, our ass off since we were 18 years old. Yeah. I mean, you and, guys were doing like you know, tours with terror and shit, like back in the day, <laughs> like 75 bucks. First of five terror tour. Right. That was like the first tour we got terror H2O, um, a couple backtrack. Like we, we were, we were, you know, getting paid that those guys are, gave us our first shot you know, coming right out of high school and then yeah. we toured with every time I die, you know, the first on their tour toured with did our own tours did, you know, I mean, we, we, we've done it all in that, in that sense. So 
I'm proud of that because at the end of the day, wherever it ends up at, it doesn't really matter. We absolutely gave it our all. We went hard. We didn't play fucking internet games and just wait and hope. We right. grinded it out. We opened for everybody. We've changed our shape many times. You saw us then, but now if you saw us now, it's a completely different shape. We have a completely different setup. Even. You know, right. I'm, I'm singing now. We got new. We change it up. We shape it up. And I'm proud of that, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep evolving, man. You know what I mean? I, th- I, think it's, I think it's easy to get. Um, I mean, especially in in metal, I think there's this, you know, like the way you start is the way you got to stay forever. And, you know, there's these kind of mythologies that are told much like the 70s mythologies that we were complaining about at the beginning of the podcast yeah you get yeah. Told, like oh this so-and-so never changed and this band never changed it's like no that no that band changed that band changed a lot and they got a ton yeah. of shit for the changes they made but yeah. so much time has gone by that they we've forgotten about those changes and now we just yeah. respect the band you know 100 percent. people forget the times they were here today gone tomorrow for bands You've been through it, I'm sure. There's yeah. been many times, and, and now in the modern, I, I feel probably, I mean, I wasn't there, but I feel like it's worse than ever because you're not picking up a magazine and seeing a bad article. It's like you're opening up your phone and everyone's just literally nonstop shitting on you. But the one thing Code Orange will never, ever, ever, ever do is operate out of fear. We do, honestly, it is what it is. If we fail, if we fall on our face, if we look stupid, if we whatever, like, we're doing what we're doing because we want to do it. Nobody tells us what to do. Right. Literally nobody tells us what to do. There's not enough. There, ain't, there isn't even enough money out there doing this shit to do something the, for, for any reason for to do something the way somebody's telling you to do it. Yeah. So it's, you might as well do what you want to do. And it's your choice. Do. It's your, you who's making the choices. Yes. Yeah. You know, like, and that, and it's like, if you, and I think that's the only way you can operate, man. Like if you're, if you're, if you do something that someone else told you to do and then fail, you're just going to feel hollow and empty. You know, if you do it yeah. yourself and it failed, Hey, you fucking tried something you thought was going to work. You know, like you tried, something, you tried something that you believed in, you know, it's art, it's music. It's all subjective, whether people like it, you know, some people will like it. Some people won't not always. I'm always like, people always like, you know, like, Oh my God, you, you know, we put out some records that people shit on and go, Oh my God, I can't believe you put out that shitty record. And I'm like, look, motherfucker, I'm just glad that anybody likes anything we've ever done. <laughs> you know, like, yep. I I count my blessings all the time that I've got, you know, people who like one fucking song that I've ever done. Like that to me, that right there is a huge accomplishment. Whether and and if they didn't follow me for the nine albums I've done, so who fucking care? Like I'm glad they followed me for one. Yes, like, definitely. I don't lo- I my favorite band in the world is Black Sabbath. I don't love every Black Sabbath album out there that they ever put out, but I love the ones that I love, and that's yeah, that's good enough for me. You know what I mean? And and you have a beautiful career, and it is what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, like you got to make what you love, and you got to do things for whatever the reason you have to do them. No one's gonna understand your reasoning, and I'm just very lucky. The one thing I do see with bands and like within bands is turmoil in that regard within the band you know and and with our band i feel blessed you know obviously fingers crossed of course but i mean these guys and girl are you know my best friend since i was a a child there's not really anything that's like if we go through the fire then we go through the fire together you're not going to see one of us bitching the other one out like i see with some of this sometimes because it's just i mean i also though i understand on the other on the flip side, band dynamics and relationships can be really tough and, and, and volatile. So I don't hold anything against anybody. I completely understand. But like, just, I feel blessed that uh, when we make creative choices, we put ourselves out there. We're all putting ourselves out there right. together. So right. when you do that, you can walk through a little bit of fire to some extent, you know, and we've all, we all deal with it. Like everybody faces it. Yeah. When you're out on the road and you got a girl in the band, is every dude at the show trying to pick up on the girl? <laughs> not really. I mean, not really. I mean, the way she, I mean, she can do whatever, but the way she carries herself, anybody who knows her or has seen her is really not of that vibe. So right. people usually pick up on the vibes. And I think we're also in a time now where like people know definitely a little bit more like what's acceptable and what's not. Yeah. And yeah. 
she's tough. So I mean, that's awesome. Give yeah. it, give it she's a try. Shredder, man. She can fucking rip. Dude, she can play for real. Not yeah. like not a game. She really can. She probably play. intimidates every dude. <laughs> you know, because they're like, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm sure, but like, she's just really, she's incredibly talented, yeah. and she's tough, and that's awesome. You know, having her on the team is like having. I just feel blessed. I'm like, I feel like I have like, she's like Tom Brady. You know what I mean? She's unreal. She's once, she's once in a lifetime. I mean, people, I feel will see that. Man. She's, I'm surprised a lot of the times she's not in the mix with more stuff, which I think she will be in the end, but just all kinds of music stuff. Cause she's one of a kind. She's not just like, she's, I don't know. I just think it's kind of, sometimes I'm like, why are they not putting her on the front of this, that, and the other? I'm like, are they stupid? Like, what don't, what don't, what don't they get? Yeah. But we'll, we'll make them get it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She definitely deserves to be on like guitar covers and stuff like that. Guitar yeah, she's gotten a little bit, but I think she should have way more. But yeah, you know, obviously I'm biased. But That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Good deal, man. Good deal. You guys, um, are you looking forward to this corn tour? Absolutely. I mean. We've only really got to do like, okay, so we, we did like a little stint. We've done some awesome little stints. Like we did a little stint, which I think you might have saw us with Meshuggah, possibly. At, at the okay. Line. Yeah, that might have been right. Yeah, that might have been It was like Meshuggah and somebody else. But um, we've done like a couple a couple shows with them. We did like a couple shows with Death Tone, which is awesome, but we didn't do like a tour. The only like real tour we got to do like that was Slipknot, which we just did. Right. And even that, is, it was awesome, and I loved it. But we played first. We played at five thirty. Oof. So that's early, dude. Dude, it's fucking early, right? So like, when you put the list on paper, it's awesome, and I'm super grateful and rules. But I just am excited to have a chance, like, play at a good time, play like a good amount of people there, do a full tour with yeah. a band of that stature. Yeah. Like that's what I want to see. Does it work? That's what I want to find out. Slipknot gave me the answer that yes, it does work because we did extremely well and we were playing at 5 30. So that showed me, like, okay, well, this shit fucking works. We're literally killing it and we're playing to like a one six full venue sometimes right. and, and like half full at best. So now we're going to see, like, and I just can't wait. I love these kind of tests and just to play with them. I mean, who is at, who's been around for that long who's still relevant and is playing arenas? Yeah. Who's playing heavy music? Right. Not a lot it's of It's literally band. opposed to impossible, dude. Yeah. You know, like it's so hard. It so is. respect to them. I mean, they did something Absolutely. incredibly right. So yeah. I, I'm excited. I can't wait. Was uh did you so you were if you grew up on punk and hardcore, did you skip over corn? Like is corn something that you kind of discovered after the fact? Honestly, a little bit, not in any way to disparage them, of course, at all. But like for yeah, us, just we like didn't like because your time, like the time that you grew up or whatever. It's almost like funny because we'll sometimes get like when people like try to talk bad about us, they're like, "You like it's new metal and stuff." But it's interesting because like we weren't. I mean, I guess that's what you consider new metal. Like the metal that we initially got into, we were more into whether it's your band or like a even like a fear factory or like a um uh like a god flesh or like uh, you know like we weren't in uh, we never real the new metal straight up new metal was not how we got on on board even though a lot of those records now i listen to especially in the past many years I listen to and i think a lot of those records are great you know some of them i don't like you know they, they get a little bit wacky and stuff but like i think we were all we got into stuff that was like slightly leaned more hardcore i guess i don't know yeah. like in in like it's i don't know but so people will throw that at us and i'm always like well it's interesting because i guess that's what it comes around to it's like similar influences and stuff but that wasn't the initial train we're on but yeah it's more like retroactive kind of thing and i have nothing but respect for them and, and i think that they're incredible same with slipknot slipknot we were a little bit later i mean slipknot was always in the orbit and very inspirational in a lot of ways but like the records weren't like the first seminal records we listened to and stuff but right. i'm sure a lot of the bands we were listening to were listening to that you know right. what i'm saying so but um yeah to, to, to get to play with them and to get to play with do slip non corn back to back i mean it's, it's unbelievable it's and i think fun. that that's i think that we're i'm i think it makes me it keeps me going because there's not a, there's not money in this shit for us we don't make money you know what i'm saying we don't we don't do 
we don't have lives based off of music that are like, I mean, I love my life, but we don't have this, you know, we're not getting so much. So it keeps you just like motivated, like, oh, wow, corn want, and we know it's not just like agent games because we've been in this for a minute. It's yeah. like corn wants you to play with them. Wow. Maybe we must be doing something right. Right. Yeah, totally. I mean, you're starting to get some pickup on radio without for blood and I know. It's awesome. Let's go. Is this really Let's your, that's really like, like the first track that you guys have had. Like, is, is this the first, I'm, I'm not sure. Yes. Really. Is it? Yeah. hundred percent. First, first, even we were never even, we couldn't even get on serious octane, you know, like oh. the rock, the, the rock, you know, right. for people who don't know the way it kind of goes, it, which is cool is like, there's the kind of XM stations like Sirius, And there's one that plays like more extreme stuff that, that's that's always championed us and is awesome. And there's one that plays like a little more rock kind of leaning radio kind of stuff. And then there's kind of like the, the radio radio, you know? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like there's like a, a little bit of like a whole, I almost feel like the octane is kind of like a feeder system to the radio or something. Or like it's like a brother system of the radio. I don't really know, but we started getting spun on there with Alpha Blood first time. Shout out to those guys for giving us a chance in that yeah. regard. Shout out to and Jose Mangan. Jose Mangan's dude, probably got you. I love you. Jose yeah. Mangan. He's the man. Yeah, he's, a, he's, he's the man. So Head Mangan Mangan. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so then, yeah, Alfred was been getting picked up on there. And I'm like, and it's been getting picked up on the actual radio. Now we're in the charts. Like last week we debuted in the charts. Oh, shit. This week I think we're going to be up a little bit. I mean, we're only in like, we were like, we were on the edge. We were on number 40. I think we'll be up a little bit this week. So, but for a band, if you heard us a couple records ago, you might not have thought that was possible. They actually told us at the label, somebody in over, above at the label, label had told us then that it wasn't possible. So yeah. but Dave Rath told them that it was. So look who's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When did the whole Dave Rath thing go down? Like recently? Pretty recently? Yeah, I'm going to get in mad trouble. I feel no, like you're not. You won't get shit. in trouble. No, just what's, what's <laughs> the, like, just, that just I think, I think like right, re, I'll just tell you this, real recently, Okay, real, real recently, recent, like yeah. right when we were gonna do this fucking song we did. <laughs> so it had me very like shaky. I, I mean, mean, this has got to be public news by now, you know, like, I guess, like stuff I like know, that doesn't just like happen public. in a bubble, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I guess most people technically don't give a fuck, so I mean, nah, whatever, yeah. like, yeah, like, whatever, but yeah, I mean, he helped guide us in that regard. And uh, we actually he pushed us to work with this producer on this song who's this giant fucking producer because we're just so fucking stupid and from hardcore. I didn't even like know really what was up with his name's Rob Cavallo. Who's done like literally like oh, green day. Yeah. He did like green day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I like went on the Wikipedia. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Google dolls. I rent. I'm like right. rent the musical, like the whole thing. I'm wow. like Suki American idiot. Every single record in between uh, yeah. my chemical romance. Um, the black parade i'm like okay and i jumped on the phone with him he was fucking cool as shit he was the coolest guy ever that's awesome that sounds like it's like opposite of like hardcore intuition or whatever where you're kind of taught you know that to stay away from it's like this guy was genuine he was he really liked the music he was just basically like listen like i don't do a lot of music anymore like overall he's like but this is just like sick and I think it's fresh and that's what I like to do. And he's like, I just want you guys to come here like now, like whenever you can and we'll figure out the other bullshit later. And I was like, okay. Wow. <laughs> and we, and awesome. we did it. It was, dude, he just loved the music. So Dave Brass did that as well. Yeah. That's killer. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, that's a guy, you know, he's crafted some fantastic songs yeah. and yeah. records and, you know, even like, you know, I love the production on American Idiot. Like, it's just yeah. like it comes on the fucking radio and the guitars just fucking rage. You know what I mean? Even for like, you know, it's not like full metal, but it's just the fucking guitars rip your head off. I love that. Dude, for sure. And like, dude, that's what I think this song has a little bit of when you put it on. Like when it comes on this song, which which was. And I'm not saying, by the way, for like people who are fans of us or whatever, that I subscribe to the idea that every song needs to, to sound like that, it needs to sound like this thing that like when it comes on the radio, you hear the highs and like it really like hits in that way. 
You know, yeah. I don't think every song needs to be like that. Some songs are more of like a psychological journey that are supposed to sound off and weird. And, and I totally believe in that. And anyone who knows our records knows I really believe in that. But like, you know, this song, that's what I wanted it to be. It was like, I want it to hit like one of those fucking songs. Because I just, we want to do it. Like, we want to do that. And we want to make a song that is like, makes you want to run through a fucking wall. Like when I, you know, when I'm fucking... I'm training jujitsu or whatever like I want this hit to come on and I want to kill somebody I mean that's pretty much it and I think our song other songs do that in a different way but it's just like we didn't have that song that was like melodic but also had our attitude but was also like aggressive and memorable and we have a lot of melodic songs that are memorable but they ain't that aggressive we had a lot of aggressive songs that are crazy but they're not that memorable they're in terms of like remembering what happens in it because it's so many different things happening so he just helped us put that together and uh all psyched it turned out exactly how i hoped i think it's pretty awesome that your whole band trains jujitsu <laughs> oh, yeah. i think that's fucking when bad, everybody nice, hates dude. on you you got to be ready man you got to be ready to right. Away, you know what i'm saying right <laughs> i mean like yeah. i i took i haven't i haven't trained in jujitsu for for, since I was a kid, but I, when I, I did train in jujitsu, I had an amazing sensei, this guy named Wally J. And uh, I trained, I trained from about the time I was like third grade to like eighth grade. And, and I, I mean, I was fucking obsessed. Like, obs yeah. I would like, that's all I thought about. That's all I did. That's, you know, just like top to bottom. Like I was there 45 minutes before class. I stayed 45 minutes after class. Like I'd spar yeah. with anybody, you know, and, uh, and it really like, I, I credit my, my sensei Wally J for really bringing a lot of confidence out of me. Like I was pretty introverted as a oh, kid yeah. and he really brought a lot of, you know, confidence out. And, uh, I, I just, I, when I saw, you know, I was on your Instagram page and I was just reading that you guys all train together and I was like, that's so fucking cool, man. Like, I mean, I think it's, yeah. I think it's cool that you do it, but I think it's even cooler that your whole band sure. goes down there because everybody's going to be at different levels but you're all kind of going on this journey together learning this definitely it's beautiful me and joe started first joe's our bass player and honestly like when i think about it when you talk about the confidence when i think about it the trajectory that we're on you know we were kind of on one trajectory when we were young it was a very like depressive like trajectory and the things that I was writing about and some people really like that stuff but it's like when we were in high school and right out of high school it's because I really had absolutely no confidence and I just it 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 my soul was rotting you know what I'm saying and honestly when we started jujitsu it was around a similar time that uh our band confidence grew for better or for worse and also more people started liking us you know what I mean like we were able to because I think we just grew a little more confident in ourselves and maybe that had something to do with it. Uh, like, you know, subconsciously, but yeah, me and Joe started together. Um, and then shade, our keyboardist started as well. He's the only one who doesn't train anymore. Cause he had, you know, he, me and Joe are purple belts. Um, we're kind of like, obviously have had a lot of time on and off from like touring and being on the road and stuff. But when we're home, we train all the time. Dominic, our guitar player is a blue belt shade our keyboardist is a blue bell but he had to quit because like he literally got his arm fully ripped out of the socket during Ooh. training like his shoulder and i think that kind of soured him on it and he just decided it wasn't worth it so he quit and uh reba started like a year ago and she's a white belt she's really good already so yeah me we all we all we all train together that's rad. That's so awesome. I mean, purple belt's like almost black belt, right? Like, is the next one brown? Yeah. The next one's brown, brown and yeah. then black? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I don't want my brown belt, though, because I'm like, dude, I'm not here enough for all this. You know, I'd rather just stay stay where I'm at for life, because it's scary. It gets scary once you get up there. People are good, man. And, yeah. they, and then they walk in, they see you with that thing, they're coming for your ass. So yeah. I don't want that target on my back. <laughs> but uh, we love training. We Our, our gym is called, uh, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, our gym is called True Believer. It's affiliate of a wider school called the GF Team, who's like a pretty legendary, prestigious jiu-jitsu uh, school. So, yeah, we're uh, GF Team Pittsburgh True Believers. So come train with us if you ever want to. We're there. So. Oh, badass. Badass. How how often do you train? Is that like your main workout? Like is is training for yeah. you like your main you don't do any other weights or running or I tried and I do. Joe lifts. 
you can see he's a little bit more muscular than everybody else. I try to lift with him. I was on a good a good lifting trajectory, but dude, I kept just getting like hurt. Like I I popped my LCL on my one knee from training and lifting, and then I popped the other one, and the other one like wasn't recovering at all. So I had to stop training, but I kind of kept lifting. And I'm not good at like I naturally have a little bit of of, of my body works for jujitsu for lifting. Lifting is like really hard and really hard on my body, but um, I want to get keep. I'm I'm hot and cold on. It. I want to get back into it for sure. But we lift a little bit. Joe lifts a little bit more. We do jujitsu. But when you lift in jujitsu back there, I don't know how people feel. Like I'm so beat up doing that with the band, like lifting and jujitsu, and I'm stiff, and then I'm getting, and then I need to find time to stretch, and it right. hurts so bad to stretch. <laughs> I mean, I'm six. You know, I'm six three. It's like the stretching was becoming like the stretching is more painful than the lifting or the jujitsu. Right. Like I can't do all three of these things. You know right. what I'm saying? So now I'm just pretty much doing jujitsu right now. So but I'll, I'll I'll get back to it. Right on. When you're on the road, are you doing jujitsu also? <laughs> like, do you find other dojos and just kind of train for a day, or, or do you just kind of take a break when you're on the road? Or or do no? You... Uh, sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. Like when we were recording Out for Blood, we went out to this awesome school in L.A. Actually, if you ever heard of the band Senses Fail, the uh, they're okay. they're like a kind of like rock band. This mm-hmm. dude Buddy. He's the singer. He was there and we went and trained with him and a bunch of dudes at this school in LA. So I've got to train with dudes from like different bands. Like, um, but sometimes it depends. This Slipknot tour, man, damn, they had us on a fucking leash, dude. We weren't allowed to do nothing. We were getting in trouble a lot. Just oh, yeah. on accident. We didn't even mean to do stuff. I mean, it wasn't, it's just like, and actually to be honest, it turned out they were right because as soon as we left the tour, we did a festival and we all got COVID, literally all of us. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. So I was like, you know what? No, oh, they were just they trying to keep you like within yeah. the bubble. They're trying to keep you yeah. in the bubble. Yeah. And we were down. Like, we're all we're all ultra fucking vaccinated. We all have the fucking gimmick booster, all the gimmick shit. Right, right. But, you know, we're like, you know, we were just like, we'd be trying to like watch them play and get in trouble. Like, it is what it is. They were smart. They were right. We didn't get COVID that whole tour. And then as soon as we got for tour, we got COVID. So and it was horrible. So respect to their team for holding it down. They held it down pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary tour and like in COVID, right? Like you can't get it. You can't get into a fucking venue. Like you lose money. Like it's like yeah. there's so many things that can go wrong. If you get, if even one of you gets COVID. We lost our driver slash like our dude who was driving our bandwagon and also tormenting us, which is an insane double duty as it is. But he uh he got COVID and he was gone and we had to like it was it was stressful as hell to be honest. Like we didn't and plus we were first, so a lot of the times we wouldn't didn't even have like a dressing room and we weren't on a bus. So literally dude, we're all in COVID, not allowed to go anywhere on like a bandwagon, like wet. <laughs> It's raining outside. We're playing at 5.30. We're all changing next to each other. And Joe's putting on his, like, leather pants and his leather, like, <laughs> beater. And, like, I'm putting on, like, my leather jacket. And it's, like, it's all wet. And it fucking sucked, to be honest. But it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> leather white beater. Dude, he wears it. That's what he wears. I know what you're talking about. I just, yeah. I didn't have a name for it. You totally just put a name to the thing. The leather beater, dude. He's first up, and you're gonna see someone else who's gonna rock the leather beater. And remember, he was all first. Right. All right, he, Joe. Shout out to Joe, Joe for pioneering the leather wife beater. My boy. We're <laughs> bringing it back, friend. I guess. Probably bringing it back. Really. He's got the leather pants, the combat boots, the leather beater. He's got like orange hair. He's insane. He looks absolutely insane, but it's awesome. Yeah, that. like real orange hair too, right? Like that's his natural hair color. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's a ginger. I got two gingers in my band. Yeah, right. The, you're a guitar Crazy. player too, right? Yep. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. How did it happen? I don't know. And so you guys got COVID on the Slipknot tour, and then... at the end, but not on the Slipknot tour. Oh, not they on the Slipknot tour. Right after. Gotcha. Festival. What else? Yeah. Oh, what, what else were you getting in trouble for then? nothing on purpose it was it was just like we would like go to i shouldn't i say too much shit man that's the problem (laughs) that's why they always keep me in the fucking they try to lock me away i mean no we weren't getting in trouble it was just like reality was we would be like they would just see us like walking around here and they're like you know we had we were supposed to stay put we're supposed to stay put 
and we would stay put, but we didn't know, like, we didn't know how specific it was. And we would like do something we weren't supposed to do. And then, you know, it was fine though. I mean, the band guys we were, we were great with, like Corey is like one of the, he's literally one of the coolest dudes ever. Like one of like the main people who's honestly like, like if you, if I text him right now, he'll literally write me back quicker than like my mom would. Right. Literally like <laughs> that's how fucking cool this guy is. And yeah. he's fucking one of the biggest stars in rock. Right. He's just like, if I send him a demo, he's going to listen to it. He's going to tell me like what he thinks. Like, Out for Blood before it came out, you know, I showed it to him. And I was like, you know, I kind of knew which did happen, but whatever. Like, I was like, I know some of our fans are going to like, they're not going to like it. He's like, dude, fuck that. This rocks. He was like, this is one of the best songs you did. Like, go for it. And he just gives you, gave me that coffee. So he's the greatest dude ever. Right. I love that dude. Right. He, didn't he jam with you guys? He did like a collab yeah. with you. Yeah. 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 We were doing some fucking song and I just literally was like in the booth and I was like, this needs to be Corey, like going really hard, like old school, just like going insane violence. I texted him. He literally did it the next day. I guess I'm saying the guy's insane. The guy is so fucking cool. And he's like, literally, if I ever am lucky enough to like get to anywhere near that point of like relevance or like anything, I would just remember like the way he is. Because he's just a respectful dude. Like, he has his boundaries with with people you can see. You know, he's got, like, his dude who rolls with him. He, like, makes sure he's safe because he is literally a famous person. But at the same time, he's there. Like, he's so cool. He would just come sit on our bandwagon and talk to us. Sit on our bandwagon and, like, got the Bluetooth out and played us all, like, their song that hadn't come out yet. And just, like, just wanted to see what we think. Like, who is the fuck what we think? Right. It doesn't matter. But we, we don't matter literally at all. But he still is like, he wants to know because he's just like a real dude who loves music and works hard and loves his family. And he's just a great dude. Yeah, that's killer, man. That's killer that you guys got that relationship. Yeah, definitely. And the clown as well. I, I didn't get to t- chop it up with him that much because he, he's a mysterious type mother. He's, el- he's elusive, that clown. I see him. I'm like, you know how it is. Like, I mean, you. I don't know if you know, but like, you know, when you're, you're opening for a band, you don't want to, like, if you're a normal person, like, I consider me and my band, like, we're socially, like, we get it, right? We don't want to bother motherfuckers. Like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to, like, fuck your day up by going up to whoever and, like, talking to you and, like, bothering you. Like, everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody's treating you. This is your fucking thing. It's called the Not Fest Roadshow. You have, like, a museum, like, truck of all your shit that everybody just goes in. It's like, so I would see him, and I'm like, I did his podcast before, actually, but it was just on the phone. And I was like, I don't want to just like run up to him, like and, like talk to him and bother him. So I couldn't even like, I feel like I'm a pretty confident person. But I couldn't muster it up because he was always like elusive in his own world. But then the last day I talked to him and he sat there and talked to me for like two hours. I'm like, damn, I should have just talked to him earlier, but so you know how it is. I, you know what I do get? I totally get what you're talking about though. Like sometimes yeah. it's like, you know how busy somebody is and you're just like, I'm yeah. not going to like, I'm just going to get like. I can be around famous person, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and say like, I'm super famous, but like, I'm relatively you're known, bro. And I can fucking like, and I can like not talk to a famous person. Like they can be like fucking 10 feet away from me and just be like, I don't like, you know, like this person's getting jammed up by everybody. Like I don't need to be the 25th person to jam this dude up. (laughs) Like I completely, I completely agree. When you're on a tour though, you do feel like here's the other thing though, for me, I'm like, okay, how do these people view it? Some dudes will take it. I know people who would take it disrespectful if you don't come up to them and say, what's up? You're the opening band right. on like the tour. Right. There's a lot of dudes like that. Like think about it like wrestling backstage locker room style. You got to right. go shake the boy's hand. Right. So like I saw Mick, like for instance, Mick, he's from Slipknot, right? I don't know. He doesn't know me. He doesn't give a fuck if I've ever die most likely. But I, he's sitting there and I'm on his tour. And it's like, you know what? I got to go and just fucking shake his hand and just be like, hey, thank you for having us. Because, I mean, dude, you right. know, you got to show respect. But it is kind of an awkward situation to be in where you're like, you don't want to punish their ass. You know what I mean? You don't yeah. want to punish them and make See, that's, them feel. That's enough, though, in my opinion. Like, that's all that really needs to be done. You know, like, just, you know, polite. it's like I used to work, you know, like I used to work just like a regular fucking job. And, like, you know, I don't need to be best friends with everybody. But, you know, if you walk by somebody in the hallway, you just go, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, like, that's yeah. it. That's, it doesn't, you yeah. don't need more than that, you know, like, but yeah. you acknowledge, hey, and I've been on a few tours where, like, and I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but it was like big name 
van, big, you know. Throw somebody like, under the bus. Biggest van. Like <laughs> <million. laughs> throw Dude, somebody under like the six, fucking bus. I've said names of every person <laughs> in the whole Slipknot. You got to say some kind of name. Or you're, this article's about to come I've out. Been, like, I've been on big tours where, like, you walk by somebody, right? And you're like, hey, how you doing? And they just fucking walk by. And, you know, at first, yeah. like, I was just like, huh okay maybe they just didn't hear like maybe they didn't hear me i'm not gonna make some big but you know next day oh hey how you doing you know again like not even like an acknowledgement that you fucking existed and i was just like so then i asked the rest of my guys i'm like have you tried to say hi to so-and-so or any anybody here they're like yeah like everybody like just looks ahead and like and i was like do you think that they didn't hear you they're like I think that they heard me you know like and i was like yeah then we started making a point so then we started making a point we were like you know, you walk by like, "Hey, how you doing?" And then, no, and then nothing. And then go, "No, hey, how you doing?" Oh yeah, oh, how you yeah. doing? And then they're like, "Oh, oh uh, yeah." Cool. You know, I'm just like, "What the fuck?" Sometimes you gotta, fuck, sometimes you gotta check. You gotta. This has, by the way, what I'm about to say has nothing to do with Slipknot, who are right, always right. the nicest, coolest this, people. This ever. is just in, in, in general. Sometimes you gotta check a motherfucker in that regard, right? Because there's no reason for people to be. Because I turn into like when that happens, I turn into. Steve Buscemi and the one Adam Sandler. What's the movie? Like he's got the lipstick on and he's like writing the people's names on a list and he just like crosses the name out. I turn into that. When that when that happens, and I walk by and I'm like, "What's up?" And then some guys just like, and then I heard I've heard an echo of myself being like, "Hello," and somebody ignored me. I yeah. become very like, I want to say this. I well, yeah, I just become evil. You know, it, it makes me. It, I never lose my soul. Yeah, it happens though. You know what I'm saying? Like it happens and it's fucking weird. And you're just like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I'm not trying to, you know, fanboy on you. I'm just saying hello as we're walking yeah. by in a hallway. Yep. Yep. Sometimes like just, you have to just as if, if I was on a job site or if I was fucking working at, you know, a restaurant or where, whatever the fuck I used to do, like I would just say hello. Hey, and the other thing is, like, if you're a cool dude and you're not, like, a total fucking asshole or weirdo, like, maybe one day, right, if we're on tour, maybe one day I pass you and I'm in, like, my own head or something and I'm not really aware of what's going on and I kind of fuck that interaction up or whatever. Then the next day I, when I'm in a more right state of mind, I would think to, like, look for you or whoever and, like, acknowledge you and, like, be respectful just to, like, show that respect, you know, because that's, right. like, everybody has bad days. Totally. But it's when you get past the bad days. And you, and you just start to see certain people. I mean, we've been lucky, honestly. There are some bands we tour with who are, like, head down on their own. But they're mostly not, like, disrespectful at all or anything. I mean, we've had trouble with crews. Crew. It's lot. always the crew. It's always the crew, right? We've had a – Code Orange has had many problems with many the crews. The fucking crews can be such a bunch of fucking cocks. Dude. And, like, I respect their job so fucking much. Like, I completely respect that they're – the only ones out here like working like actual jobs that are hard, but it's yeah. like, dude, don't like, dude, I've been like, especially lately, like the past couple of years, I'm like, I don't really care that we're not big. I've been doing this for like a long fucking time. Don't fucking throw my shit around and stuff like that. Yeah. Like right. um, we're not just some fucking pay to play fucking rookie. They'll fuck it. They'll do that too. They'll be fucking. Like I've been doing this, man. I've, yeah. I've had to, I won't say who, but there's been tour manager conversations in the past little bit where it's like, dude, we're here, man. We have not, I actually, I can't tell the story, but I have a, a story from not too distant memory of like, I had, I literally told our tour manager, I'm doing this because we are clearly don't have respect here. So I'm going. And I went and not in any kind of tough guy, like mean shit, but it's like, I talked to the tour manager who's, and I'm just like, dude, like what's the, what's the problem what's the problem we're here you know our history man we've been grinding it out we're nice kids we love this shit like we love this shit we love being here we're not making any fucking money we just want to be treated nice can we can we treat each other nice and be cool because if not that ain't gonna work for us because we don't really care that much you know we're not desperate to be wherever we're at you're right. It's like we're down though to do whatever, but like, dude, we've been doing this for a long time. Like, we don't barely have techs. We have like one right. tech for all of us. Right. We're setting up our shit in black hoodies before we go up. You know what I'm saying? Right. For the most part, we have a couple guys now, which is great. But like, dude, like, come on, man. We're carrying our shit in the rain. 
it's like let's be cool so sometimes you have to have that conversation yeah. because for you. it just gets out, you of, it gets out of control dude people get out of control it's yeah. crazy yeah they will they get it gets very power hungry out there you know especially as bands get bigger like the the crew gets very power hungry and starts trying to throw their weight around and yeah, there's been. I know what you're talking about when you're treating the gear like shit. I mean, we were on some tours where they fucking literally like threw our gear out in the fucking pouring rain, slammed the fucking door, and we're like, no bus around, like no nothing. We oh, was just like, what the awesome fuck are we time. supposed to do here now? Like fucking, what the fuck, dude? Like, Back know. of the club, that's the one that's gone nuts a couple of times. Like, again, no name drop, but I remember a certain situation we were opening for a band, an awesome band, but like literally, like this, our set would be over. And he would just literally take our shit, like just toss it outside with no plan, not even telling us what's going on. It's like, I understand the space thing and everything. Like, again, we're not fucking stupid. We're not like, right. yeah. like we we get what's going on. Yeah. It's like, just talk to us and you'll realize that. Yeah, we had to carry our gear like on and off the stage, set it up, pack my guitar That's in a guitar case, fucking carry my fucking amp in one hand and my cabinet in the other and take it back to the vent. We know what the fuck. You know? And I've been doing that since I was a teenager and I know right. the fucking game. And again, we've come, we come up through a different kind of system. We've done every, we've done basement tours and VFW tours and house tours and club tours and theater tours and everything tours. And there's still things we need to learn. So if you're telling me like we're putting our stuff in the wrong place or doing this or that, Okay, cool, but like we deserve to be able to sound good because everybody is going to come to this show and they're they're going to see us. And if we sound like shit because you have absolutely no consideration for that whatsoever, even like a hair of it, then it fucks our career up completely because people see us as a band who sucks. And I refuse to to give my life up to go be seen as a band who sucks when we put on a good performance. Right. If we suck, we suck. Well, let's, and and again, we're not asking for like a fucking five hour sound check, but it's like, or an hour sound check even, but it's just like, you know, give us, we have shit going on. We usually actually make it clear before tours, like, here's what we need to do. And then they always say it's all good. And then we always show up and it's never all good. That's what happens every single time. Whoever's on the fucking emails is saying it's cool. You can do this and that. (laughs) And we get there and they're like, what are you talking about? Like, you literally have two minutes to do this entire thing. I'm like, Dude, we got electronics. We got fucking right. like, what the fuck you want us to do? Like, so I mean, but on the flip side, there's been crews like some of the crew guys are the coolest guys. Like, I remember the drum tech for System of a Down. We did some shows with them. It's like their old school like friend, and he's like one of the coolest dudes ever. Like, give us drumsticks, like awesome. hook it up. Like, and Slipknot had some absolutely awesome tech and awesome people on their crew. So we've had mostly good experiences, but you know how it is. Yeah. When was the last time you played a uh, a house party? It's been a minute since we did any shit like that because our setup has gotten really since the last record, especially there's so much elect- electronic stuff. Yeah. So like there's a lot of stuff we just straight up can't do anymore. Like it's yeah. kind of like change. We can't really throw and go. Like we have to have like a whole like system, which does kind of suck. Like, and it's kind of lame, but when I watch the videos, it sounds cool as fuck. So whatever i miss you i miss doing just a raging house party <laughs> like yeah dude. it's fucking chaos yeah. <laughs> you know, like, that's fucking awesome yeah sleeping where you play what's that you know, sleeping that night where you just played pretty much that's pretty much like what we used to have to do like we play in the house and we sleep in the house in the same oh, spot nice. oh you mean like, Everybody... you, like oh you were playing like far away from your house yeah, dude. Like, oh okay gotcha we were on tours that were <laughs> house party at people's tour. houses <laughs> Oh, that's right. We didn't know they were parties, but they basically were. I mean, right. It sucks to be honest. I'll, I honestly never want to do it again. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, sounds, <laughs> I'm just talking about playing. I just played house parties in my locale. Like, oh, out. that's that's fun. You know, my punk, my punk rock like, friend was like, my parents are gone. He wants to have a fucking rager, and you know, we just set up in the living room and fucking, you know, scream into fucking somebody's face. Right, Machine Head's right. very first show was a house party. That's. Sick, yeah. My friend Mike, or, he was our he was our road our one roadie guy, everything guy, and he was getting evicted from his house, and he hated his landlord. So he's like, "I'm gonna fucking destroy my fucking house. You guys are gonna play, and that's gonna be the soundtrack." I was like, "Sweet!" I was like, "That sounds awesome." That's, that's killer, dude. That's so that's basically cool. like had a bunch of his friends, and they just brought like hammers and were just smashing the fucking walls like while we were playing and shit. Dude, that's insane. Pretty fun, dude. I gotta ask you, like. Okay, what I think it's like, what was that? Okay, there's obviously that clip of you guys playing that insanely huge festival. Was it like Dynamo or oh, something Dynamo like that? Dynamo 95. Outside? 
Yeah, ninety five. What was that like, dude? That's like that's the classic shit. That's like the greatest clip I've ever seen in my life. Honestly. It it was awesome. I mean, it was fucking. It was pretty nerve wracking, but you know, at that point, we had been on the road for almost the over well no almost a year at that point so we were pretty like we were a fucking machine at that point so yeah when we came on it was like you know you're just hearing about like i had never you know i had heard we we're playing the dynamo festival like oh cool that sounds cool yeah it's gonna be pretty big oh cool it'll be pretty big you know you get there and they're like it's 130,000 people we're like, <laughs> we're like what what like i didn't even know you could cram that many people into it like i'd never even comprehended anything that big you know like and yeah. uh you know you just get up there and we were you know we got there pretty early and so we were watching just the opening bands and it was like dog eat dog and i think life of agony played that day and yeah. um and i just remember looking out during their show and being like i can't even see the end of the crowd like it just blurred into <sighs> the horizon you know what i mean like the horizon it gives me thinking. chills dude that's so dude you look like you're fucking owning it you're just like so like you said the year on the road or whatever you're like you're ready for the moment oh, we I were we were fucking that. we were ready to fucking murder everything like i just it wanted is. to fucking that's all that was the only thing on my mind you know just fucking killing it that's so dude i just love that so sick yeah i love and it's still like i don't know there's the groove of it and like the way everybody's moving like it's just so awesome i love that yeah i mean i don't think i could really move like that anymore <laughs> you know, like, yeah it's hard i yeah. can't you know like my body hurts with all that movement you know i look back I and i'm like that. jesus christ like, like my posture is horrible i'm just like fuck all i'm doing is looking at my posture and going jesus christ what's the matter like sit up straight boy <laughs> dude i mean but that's I don't know. It's, it's crazy to think so that, cool. like, at that point, we hadn't even received, like, our first royalty check. <laughs> you know, like, it just, you know what I mean? Like, we were still, we hadn't even, like, made a fucking, we had made a little bit of money, you know, headlining, you know, then that's about it. And it was just crazy that, like, here we, um, they're like, oh, no, here, play here on this crazy festival. We're like, all Who right. else played? Who else played that day? Besides, you said uh, Typo Dog played, Dog. Biohazard played, uh... I think life, we were there for both days and I took a lot of ecstasy like after our show. So, like it, like the, the bands all kind of blurred together. I want to say Madball was there. Dog Eat Dog was there. Dude, um, that's the greatest fucking lineup of all time. Are you kidding me right yeah, now? Yeah, Life of Agony. A bunch of, I can't remember who else was on. It was a fucking sick. It was, um, it was incredible. I mean, it was just. Pantera like, or no, no Pantera? No Pantera. No, it was, I think it was, I think it was Biohazard was the headliner the one day and then Typo the other day. Dude, Biohazard headline and that and that many people? I think so. Yeah, Biohazard was fucking huge at that point, dude. Like dude, massive. So major la they had a major label record out, like fucking Urban Discipline was fucking killing it. They were all over Beavis and Butthead. Like, you know, it was dude, Was Biohazard it Roadrunner? Was it Roadrunner at that time? Or what, what was Yeah, it was it? Roadrunner. Yeah. What 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 was Roadrunner? Like Bio who was all on Roadrunner at the time? Yeah, it was like, the whole almost the whole bill was it was stacked with Roadrunner bands. All almost all Roadrunner bands, and then Biohazard, who was on Roadrunner, had just been on. They just put out their major label debut on Warner Brothers, so I think. But they were still killing it, you know, it was big and you know, like it was, it was a cool bill, man. A lot of cool black metal bands and a lot of cool hardcore bands. That's kind of what I hope. I mean, that's literally what we have right now. That's kind of why I hope with the whole Roadrunner thing, like when we went to Roadrunner, that. Not in some kind of like revival way, but that same energy. And again, like how I keep describing, like there's a little bit of this kind of like hardcore background to it in some kind of ways. Like I wanted, I was really hopeful that with us in Turnstile, and there's a lot of other bands on other labels and stuff. Like you said, you talked to like Knox Loose or whatever. Like there's a lot of bands that are really popping off that Empower Trip at the time, you know, rest right. in peace to, to Ryo, but he, they were, I know they do a different thing musically, but they're from like the exact same scene that we are. And Turnstile is also from that exact same scene. We yeah. were all playing the same festivals and the same shows. And it was like, we did different styles of thing, but it's like, it was all under the hardcore umbrella. That's how we all, I like met all those people. And, you know, so I don't know. I just, I'd always hoped that like, and Dave honestly was, was, believe that too like you could have like another renaissance of that on some level and i think on some level there is you know obviously turnstile is absolutely blowing up which is awesome Killing. i think Killing. we're doing we're doing good and, and 
and uh, like you said, Nocturus is doing good, and there's a lot of other there's other ones too. You know, I feel like if it could kind of be shuffled into one thing, you could get to the point where you're doing festivals with with that kind of stuff. But the way that the system is now, it's like it's I don't know how it would work. We're having like a lot of bands of that ilk all playing together, it doesn't really seem to happen in that way. But and that was kind of the roadrunner hopes, you know, bring that shit back. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like. I feel like bands like you guys and Turnstile and Knock Loose are really, you know, you've really reinvigorated the hardcore scene, you know, in my opinion, you know, like you've really, awesome. for the first time in a long time, like I kind of, I, I don't want to say I stopped following hardcore because I always follow hardcore and I always follow hip hop and I always follow metal because that's the shit that I love. But, Me too. you know, like I just felt like, you know, it just had maybe hit a wall or something, you know what I mean? Like the, whatever, whatever creativity, you know, like it needed some kind of new thing to come. And that's where like a bunch of young kids came out and started doing it their way. And, you know, I feel I, like, I it, love that. I feel like it's exciting again. You know, I feel like there's this new blood and this new take on it and, you know, it pays respect to the bands that came before, but it's carving its own path too, which I think is completely important and has to be done. You know, like for a band like you guys, you have to carve your own path. Definitely. And I think like, because it's the time it is technologically and it's because we're in 2022, it's like, you know, hardcore is even more about like what the roots are than the sound. And I like, know there's a lot of like, there's a lot of hardcore bands and that are fucking great that shouldn't really be doing anything different. Like or shouldn't be playing to a lot of people because it's the reason they're great is because the sound they've chosen is not meant for a lot of people, you know? So there's a lot of different versions of it, but I do right. think with a couple bands and there's many more that uh, I'm not naming as well, but there are bands that are not only that are poised to maybe do a little bit more as well that have those roots. And uh, yeah, I think it's been like that for a while. It's definitely been like that for a couple years. Yeah, and like I said, Power Trip, man. Rest in peace to Riley. I mean, they were really on their own path as well. So there's a, there a lot of different paths going and uh, from the same route. And I think that's pretty pretty cool. And there's something to that. And I think there's a reason why a lot of the most, I'll call it cultural or culturally relevant or fresh heavy music comes from hardcore. And if you're not, uh, if you don't come from that world, you might see the bands I'm mentioning or other bands as well and see like oh how are these bands the same thing like obviously we code orange are literally nothing like turnstile in pretty much any way other than the fact that we do come from the same world and we did do a lot of the same things and we have had a lot of the same experiences and we are part of the same scene at the end of the day you know yeah. so i think that that's fucking cool i, I want to i wish that that can be i hope that that can be expanded on in the future you know does does uh when you guys are on your headlines? I noticed you're taking uh Corey Taylor's son's band out, right? Vended. Yep. Uh, yep. Well, when that that headline tour starts in March after the corn thing. April. The corn is oh, March, April. and that's April. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it looks like you're hitting fucking all the spots, man. It looks like you're hitting all the big cities and you know everything yep. in between. That's killer. You excited for that? I'm psyched, man. Like we uh we haven't got we actually haven't done a headline tour in a long time since probably like 2018 or something so we haven't even done a headline tour because we were making a record for like a year and then COVID happened the record came out the day COVID started March 13th literally the day oh lockdown God. happened oh that's God. the day the record came out wow <laughs> and so um that fucked that all up and we you know the Slipknot thing in the past August or September was like the first thing we've done so It'll be cool to get our feet wet again. Yeah, Corey Sun's band's coming out. Uh, there's a really cool band from the UK called Lowe's who are, you know, making a lot of noise over there um, who we're bringing out as well. And a young kind of hardcore band, uh, the female singer who are killer called Dying Wish as well. So it should be a good run. I'm excited. I think we're going to be able to do a little bit of production too. I'm trying to figure out what we can afford because I would like to do a lot, but my band members aren't that pleased about that because <laughs> then they will be broke Maybe they'll be no so, money. <laughs> the C, yes the the we will see what happens we will either have production and be broke or we'll make money and have no production but i think a lot of production will be broke so i'm hopeful that we, we can do some cool stuff because the visuals are a really big part of code orange and uh, we could actually show that for once yeah 
Wait, are you guys coming to uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco, Berkeley, something like that? Yeah, we're actually playing Coachella, and around that, okay, that's L.A. Doing, yeah, that's L.A. So we're doing San Fran. Okay, right around that. Okay, if you can cool. Come out, let me yeah. know. Yeah, no, totally. Great American Music Hall. Oh, all right, yeah, it. yeah. I'd love to come out, check it out. I would love for you. Oh wait, no, no, no. It's not that one. It's it's um something hall. I don't fucking know. I'll I'll okay. send you what the shit is. But dude, okay. if you came. Dude, my boys would be so psyched. Nah, so. fuck yeah. I'll t- uh, that sounds awesome. I'd love to catch the whole lineup. Sounds great. We got a tour together, dude. Yeah. Does we it not make you know, sense? It's funny. We haven't, we haven't had it. We've been doing these evening with things for about I know. eight, seven years now, eight years. And so we haven't had I know, anybody else. I, <laughs> I know, because I always fucking ask. I'm like, what about Machine Head? Can we get it with them? And they're like, well, they're doing an evening with. I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck that. I'm like, get us in there, man. Get I love us our it, 40. Man. I love it. I love oh. playing my. I love playing my three-hour shows. <laughs> Dude, it's sick. Respect. Well, let's go old school. Get us out there. Somebody yeah. else. Fucking, I should. I should. Do it. let's, you know, let's it's probably do it, time. Dude. It's probably time. Let's go. let's go. Hell yeah, dude! It's been an absolute pleasure having you on here, man. Thank you, man. We all fucking myself, my bandmates, all look up to you and have a lot of respect for your music. And it's awesome just to get to meet you and stuff. So I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, you too, dude, for sure. And congrats on getting uh, Portnoy's kid, man. That's fucking badass, dude. He's a great kid, Dick. man, dude. Dick. That's He's ridiculous. such a good kid, too. I'm like, is this a trick? Because I'm like, why are you so fucking nice and stuff? Like, <laughs> he's so nice. He's so humble. He's, like, so down. Like, I'm That's like, amazing. dude, why are you so cool? Like, he's like so fucking cool and like he feels like a perfect fit it's like it's almost just worked out too well i'm a little worried (laughs) right like it's going too good something's got to screw it up it's going too good right no no congrats though man i mean a lot of success album tours everything like you know you guys are just killing it and i'm super happy for you and you know you should be very proud of yourself too man you know but you got a light a lot of stuff ahead for a bright future man so Enjoy thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. I pre- thank you so much for I appreciate that from you a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, the mighty, mighty Jamie Morgan, Code Orange here on No Fucking Regrets. No fucking regrets. With Rob Flynn.